uh, whether you're retired and on Social Security or not. I mean, you still have to make money on the road. And if you're young, you certainly have to make money on the road. Hello, everyone. I'm Miss J of Miss J's Travels. Thank you, thank you. I did not pay them. Trust me, I did not pay them. I do the RV transporting, uh, the RV transporting industry, and that's what I'll be um, sharing with you. What I do is I, I work maybe spring, summer, and fall, and then I'll take off the winter. I've been doing it the last several years. You know, first of all, I make sure I don't carry a lot of debt. And so when I do the RV transporting, I make enough money to pay my bills and I make enough money to play and I make enough money to put away. And as uh, Brian already said, you know, it's not like uh, I need thousands of dollars to earn a living to sustain myself throughout, you know, every month. And it really, really does work if you know how to work it. And so I have just managed to be able to do that. My channel didn't come about until earlier this year when I got a lot of encouragement from uh, Bob Wells and uh, Miss Carolyn of Carolyn's RV Life and we did an interview, Carolyn and I, and they just really encouraged me that, you know, maybe you could do a uh, channel, a YouTube channel. And so that's how the Miss Jace Travels was birthed and uh, here we are today and there's been so many, I should say so many men and women who have taken advantage of the opportunity to become RV transporters. Now, let me put the disclaimer out there. I am not a recruiter. I am not out here trying to sell you on how to be an RV transporter. All I'm doing is providing the tools and to let you know that there is other means out there to earn income, enjoy it, and get paid, and see the world. I enjoy seeing other people enhancing their lives. There, there's so many of us out here who are in this nomadic lifestyle and we need to know how to continue the lifestyle while we are making money. So if I make my money, I'll go make an RV delivery. I may be in a certain state. I'll stay a while. I'll go see the sites. I'll boondock because I do have a tow car. You can tow your vehicle on the back. Now keep in mind your tow vehicle has to be within a certain weight requirement that the RV transport uh, companies have set up. So with that, you can do a lot more. You can earn a lot more money. You don't have to worry about the expenses of how am I get back or to the next destination to pick up another RV if you have a tow car. So that has really worked out well for me and I'll make a delivery like say in Tampa and I'll keep it moving and I'll go on over to Key West, Key West, Florida, which I've done. And you know, I've delivered up in Montreal, Quebec, stayed there, you know, see the sites. I've been over to British Columbia, delivered, stayed there. You know, so all of this is for free. You know, it's for free, meaning I didn't have to come out of pocket to get to all these destinations. And I was paid to deliver this RV, so I'm on a paid vacation. Vacation. Who doesn't want vacation? Right? There's been several men and women, like I said, who have come on board. If you've checked out any of my videos, I've shared where we've gone down the road. I kind of took them under my wing and took them out on their first RV transporting delivery. And it just happened to work out that way that I just happened to be up there maybe doing a you know, a uh, routine uh, annual something. So, however, nonetheless, uh, I am available, you know, for those who are genuinely looking, seeking to, you know, venture off into this industry. And I am available to share the knowledge outside of the platforms and the videos via email, you know, if you have questions and I've done that. I, I like this, you know, the job because I'm my own boss. See, they don't tell me what to take. I tell them what I'm taking. That's how, that's how you work it. And, uh, <laughs> but you are your own boss. You really are. You work when you want to. You go where you want to go. You deliver where you want to deliver. You know, I, I want to go on a vacation to Alaska. Okay, so I'm going to take an RV that's going to Alaska. 
and that's how you work it. They don't press you, at least I'll just say the companies that I've, I've transported for, they don't press you, you know, to do anything because you're your own boss. You're, it's like being a private contractor. And I heard uh, one of the volunteers say that it's like, it's like being Uber, Uber for the RVs. <laughs> These are brand new from the manufacturer, straight from the manufacturer's line. And then they go from the manufacturer to the yard where I come in and I'll go pick up that RV that I have dispatched myself on. That's another great benefit. I can dispatch myself. I see what's out there. I was like, oh, okay, I like that. I want that class B. I want that class A. And I'm going to take it to Pennsylvania, Florida, Cali. And, and that's it. There's no really interaction with the dispatcher depending on which company you're transporting for. And all of them are different. And this is something I'm, I'm hoping to update uh, the, I guess everyone about the changes that have come over the last few years since I've done this interview a couple of years ago with Bob. Some things have changed in the industry. They have different hiring requirements. Some require a CDL. Some don't require a CDL. If you're interested in this industry, just call the recruiter. Call the recruiter and ask questions. You know, what do I need? What What is it going to take? Uh, do you... Do I have to have points or no points on my driving record? Some of them require you to only have a few points on your driving record, you know, and then there's other factors, you know. Age is not a factor. I, I there is one lady that I, company I transferred for, I believe she's gotta be 75, 77, and she has so many miles under her belt, and she's still driving. If you can drive these RVs, and most of them, like the big class A's, I call them Moby Dick, <laughs> because they're that big and you know you have to maneuver them you know, you maneuver them around gas pumps and and parking lots and you know the the truck areas and so you you know you want to have some skills you know you start small and work your way up don't just go and get moby dick and think you can handle him because one of you are not going to win it really is a good industry, and I know everyone, uh, a lot of people aren't aware of it, but it does, ex it does exist, exist, and they need people like yourself, myself, to drive these RVs to the dealerships. I'm talking Camping World, Lazy Days, Giant RV, Mike Thompson, they're in California, but all the, the big wigs, and then you do have your mom and pops, you know, the ones that are out in the middle of nowhere, and uh, it's the only one, it may be 100 miles to the next city, well, they need someone to take these RVs up there too. And this is where your tow car comes in at. So I, I will take those units because I know everyone doesn't have a tow car. More money I can make because I do have a tow car. Coming out of corporate America was the best thing that happened to me. I'm living my best life as I shared with the ladies earlier. You know, uh, being a nomad, coming out of the closet as a closet nomad, <laughs> yeah, I'll say it again. You got to come out of the closet and forget about the fear. Forget about the fear. You can do it. Uh, I've seen several ladies. I mean, they're that big and they're driving Moby Dick. I'm like, that's my kind of girl, you know. And, you know, I'm just, I'm just excited to see men and women, you know, taking advantage of this opportunity. If you go up there and you sign on and they say they're full, keep in mind, people come and people go. You know, people get hired on, they find out they don't like it, so they still need people to come back and apply. So if you get told no once, come back in the spring, summer, or the fall. They may say, oh yes, oh my gosh, we need so many people. You know, Christmas is coming, you know, the holidays are coming, the summer's here, everybody wants to buy an RV, all these people are retiring and selling their homes and selling everything that they have in their homes to buy an RV. It's really booming and they are looking for people, nice drivers, to come and drive these vehicles, you know, where they need to go. And who would not want to drive a brand new RV? I don't have to buy one. I've been in almost every one they've made, and I'm loving it. And um, I guess that'll do it for me. Yeah, I just want to thank all of you for sharing all your yeah. information. Very yeah. generous of you. Appreciate it. Uh, just curious, uh, do they allow, do these transfer uh, companies, are there any specific resources we can look into that? Because I have, I would have a thousand questions to ask them, but, uh, you know, I can limit it only to one or two with you. 
resources. The only resource I could provide, because no one's really doing this, I, and you know, when I stepped into that arena and Bob invited me to do this interview about the RV transporting, there really isn't anything out there other than the RV companies themselves, you know, but they're mostly trying to tell you how to buy the, the RV, <laughs> but not really the training on how to actually get started in the RV industry transporting. And there, there was another gentleman on online, I can't remember his name, he was actually working for one of the RV transporting and he was giving some information out that way, but there is nobody really out there on the road. However, there are some other uh, RV transporters, but they're the uh, tollway guys, you know, they pull the fifth wheels. Well, that's, that's not what I do. So, you know, they really can only provide so much information. And the only thing I would suggest to you to do would be to actually call the, write your questions down and actually call these transport companies and some of them are going to give you different answers because some of them have different requirements that you know they would like for you to you know abide by and again some of them don't require a CDL and some of them do so you actually have to do your homework and pick up the phone and call them and ask them those questions they're getting paid I'm not but they're getting paid but I don't mind sharing and um, I hope you know hope everything goes well for you the trans the transport companies yeah RV transport companies okay. like um, Horizon uh, if you want to write them down I mean again I'm not I'm not recruiting for them I'm just sharing because you know pay it forward you got Horizon, you got Classic, you got Quality, you got Bennett, you got um, Maple Tree, and there's Salt, Don Ray. So if you Google RV Transport, and most of them, the majority are up in Indiana, you know, Wakarusa, Goshen, Elkhart, etc. Google that area, and there's so many that'll come up, call them, find the one that works for you. Now let me add, uh, the lady also mentioned uh, RVs. But with the RVs, you have to remember these are brand new RVs from the manufacturer going to a dealership to be sold. The requirement is no, no pets allowed. I mean, I, I understand that. So I may have just eliminated a lot of people because uh, many of us travel with pets. The bottom line is no pets allowed, no cats, no dogs of any kind. You're, it's brand new, it smells, it has that brand new smell. Now, this doesn't mean, you know, you're done altogether. Take a, a unit to be delivered for one day. I mean, 24 hours. You pick up one day, deliver it the next day, then you go home. So that answers your question about pets in a RV. Okay, my question is about the RV transport. Uh, how do you learn how to drive the Moby Dicks? I mean, do, are, do they have trainings or do you just, it, it, it's just trial and error or how does that go? Trial and <laughs> error. God forbid. <laughs> We are covered by insurance. Yes, we are. Uh, <laughs> how do you do? Now, when you go for the orientation, they you do all the written things required. You, they do give you an opportunity to get behind a rig, drive it around the parking lot, somewhere down the street, just to see how you feel and if this is something you would like to handle. It would be nice for them to have more training, you know, for the new people coming in. So when I know that people have you know gone to get hired at these companies and the ones that I work for you know I will try to make myself available so I can give them these extra tips do not go through the drive through do not go under the hotel do not go under those overpasses bridges that are 10.9 I mean pull up the videos you'll see some funny stuff and semi trucks do it quite often but I hope that answered your question yes, thank you. Hey Jay, you mentioned uh, some people do the fifth wheels. Do they also have like I, I'd like to do it with pu just pulling it with uh, my Oh rig. yes, absolutely. You have the drive away side and the tow away side. I'm like on the drive away side. So the tow away side, yes, they pull those big fifth wheels with their own vehicle, yeah. and you have your maintenance for the vehicle. But the pay for that That's is different, pay. you know, yeah, than of course the drive away. So yes, I would call a higher per mile. Yes, yeah, because you got maintenance fees and different things of that nature, wear and tear on your own vehicle. What type of vehicle do you tow? Well, I have a little old Alero, and it has 357,000 miles wow. on it. Wow. 
Okay, great. And going strong, mind you, it's still going strong, but I am in the market for another one. I don't want to press my luck. But let me tell you about the, the vehicle, though, the Alero. Yeah. You know, some vehicles you cannot tow, but for the Alero, and you, some of you may want to look into this, when I get ready to tow my vehicle, I just take out three fuses, just uh -huh. three, okay. and it's ready to go. You know, okay. it doesn't turn, the miles don't turn once I'm rolling. You know, those are actual driven miles, wow. 357,000. That goes to show you, you know, my jacket. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, you guys have been saying CDL. What's a CDL? Is that a California driver's license? Commercial driver's license. Oh, commercial, commercial driver's, license. driver's license. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. You have to know how to uh, do air brakes with those. I have a question regarding the RV uh, transport industry. I looked at several companies and they have, uh, several, several of them have nice YouTubes or they have nice uh, information about you know how much you can make and they have great parties and things, but it just seemed like uh, so much of a job, they, they just want you on the road a lot and, and the bottom line, it just didn't seem like you could make very much money. So I'm kind of curious, are you just existing, just enough for fuel uh, and where do you sleep when you're towing? Okay, don't believe the myth. Uh, well, when it comes to the income, well, let's start where your first question was, you know, it, it seems like they just want you to work, work, work. Well, that sounds like a trucking company, if you ask me. Uh, again, the requirement is for the most of the RV transport companies, if you just drive one vehicle once a month. That's just to let them know that you're still interested. Because if you're not interested and you're not coming back for two or three months without you know, saying anything, of course they're gonna close the books on you. So their requirement, one unit a month, I mean, I can do that just locally. Take a unit from the, uh, here, Las Vegas, down to Arizona, et cetera, and I'm done for the month. And you do get paid by the mile. And some of them pay differently anywhere from 82 cents up a mile on up to a dollar now i've seen a dollar 12 a mile and with that out of that or i should say in that is your gas they include your gas with that so if you figure you have to do the math you know if you're taking a long distance how much is going to cost you out of that lump sum that they give you in gas how much is it going to cost to get that unit there and once you make the delivery whatever's left is yours so but if you're, you know, gunning it down the highway, you're eating up your own money. You know, so you just got to know how to budget and drive, you know, with the units. And then your other question was, yeah, can you make the money, right? Sleep. 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 Okay. Now, some of the units, they don't have sofa. On the, yeah, well, they don't have sofas. They have overhead cabs or they have the, um, the tables that turn into a bed. You use those for the most part. You know, they would like for you not to sleep on the mattress. However, the mattresses do have plastic on them and they're brand new. But, the, you know, the preferred method of sleeping would be to sleep on the sofa, the overhead cab, or turn that table into a bed. And after you deliver, you know, then it's on you, you know, where you sleep at at night. But while you're in that RV, you are in it, you know, 24-7 until you make that delivery. Uh, you're responsible for it. You are insured. You know, something happens. You, you're not, you know, SOL. You know, you are insured and bond. You know, I hope that answered your question. Uh, thank you all for coming today. And I just have a question about taxes. Um, do most of these places, and I'm sure it's different for all of them, but are you an independent contractor? Are you to receive a 1099? If so, what are some things that you can write off to defray your tax? And, um, or are you W-2 employees? Thanks. For me, it would be the 1099. And I write off anything and everything pertaining to the job. <laughs> you know, my, my laundry, uh, my food, of course, the gas that, you know, you put in the unit, you write it off. Uh, any type of lodging, like if I have to, I'm going to pick up a unit, but I ha they ask me to stay there overnight because, the, you know, it's not going to be ready till the next day. You write that off. Oh, my gosh, you know, I got to get my hair done because I got to go pick up this unit. I need to look presentable. <laughs> oh, you know, your attire, your work clothes. Uh, I mean, you know, anything pertaining to the job, you may have to fly into the uh, location to get the unit. 
you write off that airline, you write off your vehicle maintenance. You know, I'm, I'm pulling a tow car. I'm replacing tires on the regular. So I'm writing off my tires. You know, anything pertaining, you know, to the job that you're utilizing to, uh, I guess, deliver it successfully and anything's coming out of my pocket, I'm writing it out. I like it like that. Thank you all. So let's give them a big hand. That was great information. Wow.